The Jagras belongs to the Squamata family and this is where we find snakes, worm lizards and lizards. Unlike common lizards, the Jagras has a much smaller ribcage and has a clear curve moving down its lumbar vertebrae down to the sacrum. It is very slim, having moved most of its organs close to the ribcage to keep the majority of the weight over its frontal arms to alleviate the lumbar vertebrae from carrying too much weight. We can see its massive scapula which has grown to support the change of posture and while the humerus seems to be extended a little bit, the radius and ulna bones has extended vastly. Combined with the extended fingers and claws, the arms has become a predatory tool for the jagras, capable of inflicting a lot more harm to the prey than its smaller teeth. Lizards tend to have their heads noticeably bigger than their neck, but the jagras has a more narrow and short one, about the width of the neck itself. It also has an unusually long neck, making the head and neck section resemble more that of a snake. It also has a very developed frontal orbital, where the deep cavities protect the eyes from damage during battles, especially from strikes coming from above across its head. But it distances itself more or less from the traits of snakes otherwise, such as the lack of a forked tongue. The jagras are far from the biggest animals in their environment. They have evolved to move quickly close to the ground, leaving other predators with a much greater height advantage to attack from above. As a countermeasure, they have evolved keratin-based spikes along the neck. Being keratin-based and not connected to the actual bone structure, the spikes can move about fitted to the muscles and skin tissue, which means they will more or less stay on top even when they twist their neck. The larger spikes on the back first appears to be growing out of the vertebrae, but they do show some subtle movement based on the stretching of the skin during movements. Being keratin based, these spikes can also grow back even after breaking off during battle. It is unclear whether the jagras undergoes ectasis, which is the shredding of its outer skin, or if it keeps the same scales its entire life. But there is no old scales found about in their habitat, so that might give some answers to that. What sets jagras apart from their close relatives is how they hunt and communicate. The jagras hunts in flocks, communicating, coordinating and trapping their prey, which is unlike common lizard behavior. This shows that the jagras has a much greater evolved hunting instinct and overall intelligence than the rest of its squamata relatives. While these abilities should allow them to become more efficient hunters and be able to supply themselves, the jagras seems dependent on the great jagras for food. While they eat, a few wolves then guard for other predators who could become attracted to the food as well. They don't show any signs of beta or alpha hierarchies while eating. Everyone is free to eat their share when they want it. This lack of leadership also shows in battle. If a jagras dies, the rest of the pack tends to retreat, again showing a sense of lack of leadership and trust within the pack. Their claws and extended arms aside, the jagras primarily attack in a similar fashion to their real-world counterparts. They shift quickly towards their prey by pushing themselves forward and use their bite to capture their prey. The jagras first take a step backwards before charging, and this is not normal behavior. It is done to cue the player about an impending attack to make the enemy's moves more predictable and potentially rewarding the observant players. They also leap from great distances, but even then, they use their bite first and foremost to harm the prey. The jagras resides in the ancient forest, a hot climate, but with a lot of plant life which creates an environment with a lot of shadow and moisture. The jagras can easily thrive here, as they have evolved to make good use of their behavior and instincts here. The dense forest and large leaves blocks out most of the sunlight, and plant life is primarily taken over by plants with large leaves, which are capable of spreading across large areas. So there are just about no flowers in this particular region, because they can't get enough sun to survive here. But with the help of the large leaves, they are capable of hiding in the shadows and make good use of the dense foliage in their environment to surprise their prey as it passes by. 
The plants there form a color palette primarily in green, blue and yellow, which is also a good fit to their own scale colors, as that allows them to blend in easier with the foliage around their environment. The jaguars has also evolved to be a lot more mobile than the relatives and their environment is a good fit for that as well with the trees and vines, which allows them to move about the environment without alarming their prey below. The jaguars are a frightening involvement of the squamata family. While they have evolved in a very solid direction that allows for better defense, mobility, pack mentality such as coordination and cooperation, they still have not quite adapted the instinct to use their arms as a tool for engagement quite yet. When they do, I think they will become a lot more dangerous to the wildlife around here, but their efficientness in hunting now can be harmful for them in the long run. There is an obvious lack of plant eaters within their habitats already. The plant eaters resides mostly outside their habitats, who knows not to go into the deep forest because of the problems with sight in there and the sense of predators that lurks in there. So they will keep to the edge of the forest while it grows completely without maintenance inside. And outside the dense forest, the jaguars camouflage an element of surprise is non-existent, and they cannot take advantage of their vertical ability. This again shows why the jaguars are still dependent on the great jaguars for food, even though they are evolved to be highly skilled predators. So that's it for this episode, let me know which creature you want to see next, and bye!